jail. It's the county jail. It's a jail, not a prison. There's a difference. And the difference is that this is like being on remand. It was built in 1756 and was the second of three county jails. So any crime committed in Derbyshire, if you were caught, you ended up being brought here. But you were only here until the trial. So if you missed the summer assizes, you had to wait here until the autumn assizes and you'd be kept here like being on remand and then punishment was meted out on you, which wasn't imprisonment, mm. apart from if you were a debtor. If you owed money, Oops. then you would be kept here until you paid off your debts. It's like a whole percent, which yeah. was a bit yeah. difficult. Mm. If you've got no money. Yeah. Yeah. So you could be here a long time. You then, could be here you? a long time. <laughs> yeah. Or family or somebody would, would eventually pay your debts or you commit suicide Ooh. in here. Um, loads of suicides have taken place in here, obviously. So the punishments meted out to you were being whipped at the cart's tail till your back be bloody. So they tied you to the back of a horse and cart and whipped you through the streets of Derby. Um, stripped naked, stri stripped to the waist, male or female. Um, and when you got back here, salt rubbed into the wounds when you were taken back into the cell. Depending on the severity of the crime that you'd committed, you could well be taken out again next week. And wow. whipped again, obviously the, with the same wounds. That probably did kill you. Then um, the next one was, was branding with a red hot uh, branding iron with a letter T on the side of your cheek. Yeah. Letter T. It's an early form of CRB check. You try walking into a jeweller's shop with a letter T on your face. Yeah. That's the answer. Um, then, of course, there was transportation. But the fascinating thing about transportation is that everyone thinks that it was all Australia. It wasn't. It was America. Oh. All of our convicts were sent either to the Spice Islands, the Caribbean, parts of Africa, and America. And then we lost America in 1776 we couldn't send anybody to america anymore mm -hmm. and so we got no we hadn't got prisons that were big enough to, to to accommodate all these people that had committed crimes so what we did was we put them on prison hulks on the river thames which was an old rotting ship that they converted into like cage cages inside it and they locked you up in there and then whoopee we got australia 1787, the first fleet went from Portsmouth or Southampton, I can't remember which, uh, to Australia, and then all our convicts did go to Australia. But it, originally it was, it was the United States. Got mm -hmm. a load of convicts wow. there, just the same. Um, so that's whipping at the cart's tail, branding, transportation, or hanging. When industrialisation took over big time and everyone moved countryside, into the towns to work in factories and mills and what have you, the crime rate went through the roof, literally through the roof, because people were living in very squalid conditions, very poor wages, uh, and the government needed to do something to try and control the crime rate in this country. And so they thought the best way of doing that was to kill as many criminals as possible. And from 1723 in this country, there were 222 hanging offences. Wow. wow. Think of a crime, <coughs> trust me, it was a hanging offence from 1723. It was called the Bloody Code. Yeah, stealing bad. a sheep, stealing a cow, shot breaking, house breaking, burglary, rape, attempted rape, murder, attempted murder. Setting fire to haystacks. Four men hanged in front of this building in 1817 for setting fire to a haystack. Wow. Um, in the same year, three men hanged and beheaded, beheaded in front of Derby Jail. The last beheading with an axe in Great Britain, in front of this building. The last rebellion in England, and the last sentence of hanging, drawing, and quartering in provincial England. Here, in front of Derby Jail. It's got a pedigree section on this place, I tell you. Um, um, breaking down riverbanks was a hanging offence. Cutting down ornamental trees, uh, poaching. Uh, shooting rabbits, well that's poaching anyway. Yeah. Appearing on the street with a sooty face. <coughs> I presume chimney right. sweeps, I'll have a wash in between jobs. Wow. Or hang on a minute, did they work at night? Yeah, they'd have to, otherwise. <coughs> it probably didn't, to be honest with you. But basically, why did you have a sooty face? Yeah. Mm. Camouflage screen. Camouflage screen. Oh, wow. You're a burglar. Or you're a poacher. Blackened your face. 
I was to hide your identity. Uh, yeah. 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 And so you've been out burgling or poaching, hanging a fence. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> unbelievable. Anyway, I am working towards the reason why a place like this is so haunted. Because obviously, it's the nature of the place. You say, oh, right, what am I all about? I'm interested in the history that caused the ghost. Mm. No, I want to know why there's a ghost. Where who it originated is, from. Who is the ghost? Yeah. Yeah. What happened to the ghost that yeah. caused it to be a ghost? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's where the reality comes in, in my opinion. So it's the history behind the haunting, if you like, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. which is which is all, or I think, is all important. Yeah. So anyway, yes. so we've got all these hanging offences, right, from 1723. Um, right, <clears throat> so we've got a young young chap of 26. Um, he's got four kids. His wife's pregnant with a fifth. He was working in Derby Silk Mill and, and turned up late for work one morning, so they sacked him. His wife's pregnant with a fifth kid, so she can't go out to work. And the kids are starving. Sounds oh. a bit similar, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah. Um, they stopped eating completely two weeks earlier. And uh, any, scra <coughs> any scraps they could get, beg, borrow, steal, whatever, for the kids. So he goes off up the road to a place called Kedleston Hall. And he snares three rabbits. Oh. And he's walking back through the woods with these three rabbits. And he's caught by the gamekeeper. He's brought here to Derby Jail. The rabbits are confiscated and used for evidence in the court. So the kids, gonna the, kid, the kids don't <laughs> even get them, right? Mm, yes. And um, he's sentenced to hang. He's brought back here to Derby Jail to await execution in the condemned cell, uh, knowing that not only he's going to die, his family is. but his family's probably going to die. They were dying anyway. Yeah. Before he risked his life to get food for his kids, mm. they were starving. So without dad, the, the yeah. breadwinner. Yeah. Mum can't go out. She's pregnant with the fifth kid. Yeah. They're probably all good. He knows that. Sitting in the condemned cell waiting to die. Then we've got another lad. Wielden. <coughs> Joseph Wielden. <laughs> hacked his niece and nephew to death with a gorse hook. Oh, a oh, gorse hook is, is similar <coughs> to a scythe. Yeah, but it's straight. Thing. It's for hedging. Yeah. 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 Uh, and the little boy of eight put up quite a fight. And he hacked him to pieces on the kitchen floor. And his little niece is the four-year-old little girl he beheaded her um, and he was brought here to Derby Jail and put on trial for murder and sentenced to death now guys I don't care whether you're into executions or not or whether you believe there is we should do it or not mm -hmm. but those two yeah. you can imagine they were both hanged yeah. yeah as were hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of what I would refer to as almost innocent people that were hanged for the most trivial crimes in this country. It's innocent people yeah. that makes it more I sad. mean innocent yeah. people, yeah. So, um, it was rather unfair to say the least. So they decided that, that they needed to create a punishment for murder that was worse than a punishment for murdering three rabbits or for breaking down a riverbank, or setting fire to haystacks. And of course, it, this, this was where the church came in. So, uh, the church came up with this brilliant idea of, for a murderer, creating a terror beyond death. In 1752, they passed the Murder Act. Uh, the government passed the Murder Act, with the help of the church as well. And the first part of the Murder Act was that no murderer after 1752, was allowed to be buried. Right. Oh, at all. all right. No burial, right. So, no, no six foot of English earth, no gravestone with your name on it, no family around the grave, no Christian burial service to yeah. lay you to rest. Yeah, to rest, rest, which is one of the phrases I use so much mm. in my ghosty stuff. If you're not laid to rest, where are you? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You are abroad, Unsettled. wandering the earth mm -hmm. as a tormented soul. A ghost, basically. Yeah. 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 So, it's created again. But, of course, what are we going to do with the body? Burn them. Mm -hmm. Burn it. Burn it. Mm -hmm. No. Now, um, 
what I really would like to do now is to take you into the murder room and explain the second part of the murder act. Oh, so hang on, I think I know. They'd have been took to medical science, wouldn't they? Mm. Penny Dreadfuls. They, they weren't this big. The mm. night before your execution, they came into the damn cell and interviewed you. Right. And wrote down your life story. This is like a Westlife programme. <laughs> <laughs> this is what they wanted. They, these were sold for a penny a sheet at your execution so that people could read about you because you were the star performer. Incredible. So, part two of the Murder Act, right, 1752. No murderer was allowed to be buried, so what are we going to do with the body? The death sentence for a murderer after 1752 was that you be taken back from this courtroom to the jail from whence you came, and from there to a place of lawful execution. There you will be hanged by the neck until you are dead. Now remember this bit, until mm -hmm. you are dead. Yeah. There's a really valid point in this bit. And then publicly dissected Absolutely. and anatomised mm. in the Shire Hall mm. here in Derby, or the Shire Hall in Nottingham, or Leicester, or yeah. Stafford, or whatever county there it was. So, after you were dead, or hopefully dead, mm -hmm. you were taken to the Shire Hall, laid on a dissecting table, mm. and the first thing they did was wire you up to a battery. I'm not talking of 4AA batteries either. I'm talking of a huge <laughs> vat of water with a zinc tower in it and a copper tower in it and wires. This is in 1752, by the way. You do know the Egyptians had batteries, do you, in the pyramids? Mm, not in yeah. the pyramids, but yeah, yeah. Oh, there's nothing new on this planet, I'm telling you. So they wired you up, one of your legs would go up in the air, the chest would <laughs> heave, the face would sometimes... People fled, because don't forget this was public. He's coming back to life! Well, they weren't far from the truth, were they? Sounds like Frankenstein. How? Isn't it? Yeah. You wait. Yeah. How do we bring people back to life? Shock. Defib. Yes. Yeah. 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 Electricity. Yeah. 1752. Right. Anyway. Right. <coughs> Guy from Derby. Erasmus Darwin. <coughs> grandfather of Charles Darwin. Oh. Yeah. Most incredible guy you would. I'm, I'm not going to go into the history lesson, but he invented evolution. Before Charles Darwin, photosynthesis, steering mechanism, for car anyway, all, forget all that, he was a doctor. He dissected murderers here in Derby. Ooh. He was fascinated by electricity. Ooh. And when Mary Shelley wrote the novel Frankenstein, yes. if you've got a copy, have a look at the preface. Ooh. The inspiration for this novel is Dr. Darwin of Derby. Ah. Because oh, wow. of dissecting murderers. Ah. Oh boy. Anyway, after you, they played with you a bit, right? the next thing they did was flayed the skin. They it's pulled nice. all your skin off, sent it to the tan yard here in Full Street in Derby, tanned your skin and used it to bind books, telling of your life and trial. If there was a big enough piece of skin, a pair of slippers for the local man as a souvenir. In Berry St. Edmunds, there is a book bound in a murderer's skin and his pickled scalp with one ear still attached. Grief. Still on this, but I've had that in my greasy little mitts in when I did Ghosts of Suffolk. They've got, let me take it out of the glass case. Uh, there's books up and down the country bound in human skin oh, of murderers. God. The next thing they did was they boiled your bones in a big cauldron mm. to get the meat off them mm. and then sent them to the local skeleton maker, wired up, and then presented to the local hospital. There's a real skeleton behind you mm -hmm. there. Yeah. That is a human one, yeah. Yeah, that's real. And the, the little skull at the bottom, that which has like disappeared. Child, oh, it's here now. Well, you're right. If you look at the two skulls in this second glass case, yeah. the one on the right is a child under six. It's yeah. still got its milk teeth in it. Oh, God, yeah. And that came out of a badger set at Tutbury Castle. Wow. Oh. That's cool. Guy walking that his dog. Small. Guy walking his dog. Um, saw this skull lying on the ground by a badger set. Mm. Incredible. So after they boiled your bones, your bits were all removed and cut up and used for the further of some medical science. Of course, that was the part of the idea. Um, there's a oh down bottom. There's a, there's a heart at the bottom there in a glass case in a bottle. There's a there's a brain in a bottle there. Oh, <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, no. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll look at them after. Yeah. Oh, no. um, <laughs> so the terrible part about this was, 
that you, the person, the human being, ceased to exist. I mean, completely. You were obliterated. There was nothing left of you. You were gone, which they, they feared because the people... Right, the punchline of the story is, guys, the body wasn't whole. And that mm. meant on the Day of Judgment, no physical resurrection for you. No material resurrection. Which, I think it was the body of Christ that... Yeah. Yes. Came out of so, you have... On the Day of Judgment, apparently, you, 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 we all come back together again, you know. Did you know that? Yeah, we all come back together. Do with bollocks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's what they believed at the time. Yeah. So, the body wasn't whole on the Day of Judgment. So, they know they're not going to get in through the pearly gates. They ain't going to go to hell. I'll stop here, thanks. Mm. That's cause ghost. And that's what they were doing. They were condemning them to hell. Oh. That was the terror beyond death. Hellfire and damnation. Sorry. Ripping of flesh and gnashing of teeth and all the terrors of Dante's Inferno, all this mumbo jumbo. The, 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 of course they believed it. They got nothing else in those days mm. other than their religion, their faith. Yeah. Because, you know, death was commonplace. Most people were dead by 40. Yeah. Um, kids died before them. They'd been in battles, executions. That <clears throat> it was the afterlife that was so dramatically important to people in those days that they tried everything in their power to be able to get in through the pearly gates. Well, you take somebody to pieces like that. Yeah. They know they're not going to get in through the pearly gates. Same thing with hanging, drawing, and quartering with Catholic priests and things like that. The body wasn't whole, and so on the day of judgment. They're going to go to hell. Mm. Now, it was up to the judge. He could do one of two things. Have you public dissected or gibbeted? Yeah. I don't, that was Hung good. 30 feet in the air near the scene of the murder, with the fowls of the air pecking at your flesh and okay. pecking out your eyes. Oh. And we did it twice in Derby. We did it to a guy in front of Derby Jail in 1815, Anthony Lingard. I believe he's still lingering. Um, here, and um, they hanged him, and then before he was before he was executed, the blacksmith, as they always did, used to measure you for your last suit, which yep. was the metal cage, and they hung you up in 1815, and they didn't take him down until 1826. Yeah. So that's the terror beyond death, and it was. I mean, it really. What well, did it work? No, I don't think so. I don't think it create. I don't think it stopped murder murders. It didn't stop murders. It was more like a statement as well, wasn't it? It was revenge. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the word ghost mean? Well, when I wrote the book, which is out there at only ten pounds, signed copies yeah. available. Um, um, <laughs> well, I wrote the book. It's called What Is a Ghost? Yeah. But but so I thought I'd better find out what the word means. Ghost. G H O S T. Come on. Then. What's it mean? Come on, you I didn't know. Go on. I ain't got a clue. But you're paranormal investigating. You're on a ghost hunt tonight. Yes. Tell us, so like what that. is what does the word mean? Is it's it not separating so dots, doesn't it? It's G dot da 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 da. No. I was okay. more thinking something to do with spectral something or other. Okay, well, uh, well actually, if you went to the Oxford human. English Dictionary, it says the disembodied spirit or soul of a dead person. Ah, uh, yeah. No. No. And the next question you're going to ask, which is going to really get you, is the word ghost a noun or a verb? Noun. I have no idea. I think a noun. You know the difference? I mean, it's a bloody long time since I was at school, kids. But I mean, a noun, a noun is in, uh, hang on, glass, that's a noun. Yeah, it's yeah. A, a thing. It's a real thing, yeah. A verb is a doing word. Yeah. Mm. Well, I'm sorry, but the word ghost is a verb. Oh, oh, yeah. This is great word. stuff, this is, I love it. Right, okay, so the word ghost comes from a proto Indo. You go to sleep, Phil, if you like, because you've heard all this before. <laughs> if you want to yeah, 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 Night, Phil. Yeah, yeah. Night. It's a pro proto, I don't know what that means, by the way, proto Indo European word, goist. G H O I D Z, goist. What does it mean? To be frightened of. Ah, so it's actually in the word. It's a verb. I'm frightened. That's a doing word. Do you know what I mean? Right. From that goist, G-H-O-I-T-Z, comes the Old English word ghost, G-O-S-T. The Old English word gast, 
G H A S T, the German Geist, Geist Saxon yeah, yeah. Halter, yeah. Geist, right? the Fre Flemish word Geist, G H W S. They all mean the same. They all come from this Proto Indo European word, right? When William Caxton came over to England in the 1400s from, from Holland, he brought a printing press with him. First time ever. And before then, everything was written down by scribes, by monks and you know. But he came over with a printing press and he took every English word, would you believe, and put it into print. And he took the Middle English word ghost, G-O-S-T. But it come from Holland, he spelt it with a silent H. Ghost. Ah. We got our ghost. Wind back to Old English, ghast. Have you ever been aghast at something? Mm. Aghast! Ah. Have you ever seen something ghastly? Yeah, ghastly, oh, yeah. It's frightening. It's a bloody verb. Anything we don't understand that walks through the wall, footsteps going up the stairs, doors opening and closing, bumps, bangs, taps, rattles, things flying across the room, blah, 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 anything to do with it, we're frightened of it. Yes. Mm. Yeah. And we call, it, going, it? we call it a ghost. I want to change the name from ghost to energy. There's two parts to us. I don't think anymore that the brain <coughs> is where the mind is. I think the brain is the hard drive that stores the energy, stores, stores the information, more than that as well. I think the mind, your mind is all over you. And it's your spirit, your soul, your energy, your consciousness, your ego, you. And when I say you, I mean you, because there's only one you, you know, on this, in this yeah. universe. There might be others that look like you, but there's only one you. And it, you are nothing but electromagnetism, mm -hmm. energy. And you cannot destroy energy. The, the other part of it is, of course, the flat, the... the, the the vessel that holds the energy, that's energy, and that becomes more energy, because when, when you die, your body becomes fertilised for daffodils. It's, it's still energy, but there's a, a within energy that cannot be destroyed. So, and it's nothing, that's the whole thing, it's an energy thing, right, that's what we are. Um, so the word goes, but right, I'm, I'll, I'll zip through it very quickly, if you want me to, or if, if not, just stop me. I believe there's two parts to the ghost business. One is 40%, and the other is 60%. And I believe the 40% of ghosts, I'm going to keep calling them ghosts, Yeah. never mind the energy stuff or anything else, 40% of ghosts is an intelligence that's you. Your personality, your ego, your consciousness, your spirit, your soul, you. In an ideal world, that should go to wherever they go to. But it's not an ideal world. We don't always make it. In an ideal world, all babies should be born at yeah. first. Mm -hmm. But it's not an ideal world. We no. have breach births. And, you yeah, know, it's all that sorts. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? And, and so it isn't an ideal <laughs> world. And so they sometimes go off at a tangent and end up spinning or get trapped or lost or whatever. But the other reasons are, and this is an intelligence, by the way, that knows you're there, that can come back to you and be around you if you, if, if you need them, um, especially grandparents, things like that. Um, they... They are around us at all times, but I don't think they're up there or down there. Do you think they're still on here? Yeah, yeah. They're here on another level, frequency, well, time zone. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know I, mean? I don't think they're up there, but they pop back like that. They're here. Yeah. But I don't know why we can't see them all the time or why they can't make contact. I haven't got a clue. Unfortunately, well, they, they don't, do they? They can't. I don't know why. Well, they can't show you yeah. because yeah. they haven't got. Don't understand a human why. body. No, mm -hmm. no. Which is really strange. But so that, that's an intelligence that's there. So basically, why are they still here? Most of them aren't. Most of them have gone somewhere. Mm -hmm. But those that are still around is because they've either got unfinished business, murdered, nobody found the murderer, executed in here for a crime they didn't commit, got a job that they never finished, that they love so much, mm -hmm. a hobby that they love so much that they still think they can. That's number one. Number two, they don't know they're dead. Yeah. Happens to youngsters yeah. especially, they've got the whole of their life in front of them and they actually, it's cut off in a, you know, I mean, soldiers on battlefields, um, airmen on airfields, young trainee pilot, hit the ground at 350 miles an hour, spends the rest of eternity walking across the apron of the airfield towards the control tower. Is the war still on? Yeah. 
I know it's a bad landing, can I have another Spitfire? They don't know they're dead. No. And that's a, 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 there's a lot of them like that around, especially on yeah. battlefields. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, blown to pieces, never laid to rest, yeah. never buried, never had a decent burial, that sort of stuff. Uh, then the next one, they like it here. Mr. Simpson, Blythe Simpson, the jailer here. It's his place, isn't it, Phil? Still here. That's yours. I know I keep telling him it's mine, but he doesn't like it, does he? Uh, oh, he was, so that's why he was jailer of 37 years. That's a very long time for anybody in those days. Yeah. Uh, it's his place, um, and he's still around. Or Fred from the factory, that it was his, he never married, it was his machine. He, he, he tre treasured that machine, he polished it, cleaned it, he, you know what I mean? And then two weeks after his funeral, people see him standing back by his machine. He, he hasn't moved on. Houses, the old lady in the house that loved it so much stays behind. And it's only when someone starts doing work on the house. They don't like it. They don't like it. What are you doing? Why are you knocking that wall down? What are you stripping my wallpaper off for? Yeah. That, I mean, I could bore you for hours with accounts from people yeah. that, that, that have got a, the, the previous occupant in the house still. That so happens all the time. Because 2,000 years ago, something came on the scene that's caused an awful lot of ghosts. TV? Christianity. Oh, Christ. Oh. <laughs> That's what's done here. Oh. The Emperor Constantine, the Roman Emperor, was a pagan, mm -hmm. worshipped uh, Mithras, which had a fertility sim uh, celebration every year called Ishtar, around yes. April time. Oh, Ishtar. Yes. And do you know what the symbols were? Oh. Bunny rabbits and eggs. Yes. Yes. That's 4,000 years before Christianity yes. came on the scene. And he was, he was a, he okay. worshipped the cross. His mum was a Christian, St. Helen, keeper of the cross. Uh -huh. And he realised mum's religion was good and going somewhere, so he hijacked it, nicked it, called it the Roman Church. Uh -huh. And invented all the terrors that have kept us under control for the best part of 2,000 years. Ten Commandments, Seven Deadly Sins, yeah. Four Mortal Sins, Judgment Day. Purgatory, Hellfire, Damnation, Beelzebub, Baal, the Devil, Demons, the Antichrist, Witches. The medieval man believed all this stuff. Of course they did. And so it's kept us under control. So you've broken a commandment. Oh, sure, yeah. You've committed a mortal sin. Where are you going to go? Down below. Straight down below. Yeah. Do not pass go. Go straight to hell and burn in Hellfire for eternity at 10,000 degrees centigrade. They knew this, they were terrified, and so, I know I'm not going to get in through the pearly gates, I ain't going down there, I'll stop here, thank you. It's caused ghosts, basically, to stay behind. Now, that's what I believe is the main protagonist in this building. I believe that the vast majority of what's here, I don't know if you agree with me on this one, Phil, but the vast majority are the 40%. Yeah. The spirit and souls of dead people that haven't moved it's on. Right. <laughs> but the other 40%, and I'll be brief on this one, because I don't think this is quite so much, is I call the stone tape theory. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a recording held yeah. in the fabric of the building. And it's caused because silica, how many times have you heard this, Phil? I don't know. Silica makes up the whole of the Earth's crust, rock. Sandstone, <laughs> limestone, <laughs> granite and clay are made of silica. Silica is made of <coughs> oxygen, which is negative, and silicon, which is positive. And when the two come together, they create, I, create silicon dioxide, SiO2, silica. Right? Glass, porcelain, sand, cement, concrete, quartz, crystal, sandstone, limestone, granite, clay, bricks, they're all made of silica. Right, the red of the sandstone in the building, mm. The redder the bricks, the redder the clay, the more iron oxide there is in it, which is rust, which is magnetic. Oh, I'm there. Right. I'm there. This is exactly the same as a cassette tape, or a mini, mini DV tape in your camera, or a reel to reel tape. Because basically, the tape is made up of acetate, which is silica, and sprinkled on it is iron oxide particles. And you can hold a recording. But you have to have something in it to make a recording. All the stuff you've got with you now, 
there has to be something in there that's making a recording, it. and it's called energy. So, so basically, all this silica business, sandstone, limestone, granite, clay, blah, 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 all of that stuff can hold a recording. But there's energy in your machines here that yeah. make a recording. So where does the energy come from to make a recording in the stone in this building, or the, the castle? Because I believe the castles, stately homes, because they're huge stone tape recorders that hold a recording, the image of a dead person. The energy comes from you. Because each one of us here emits two kilowatts of electricity in a 24 hour period. Not at this moment, but in a 24 hour cycle, you emit two kilowatts of electricity. But you have within you a power reservoir that you can use in time of crisis. And I don't mean 93 years of age dying in a nursing home. I'm talking about the five ingredients that create a haunting. A, a, not a haunting. Murder, suicide, accidents, yeah. battles and executions. Oh. The energy that your body is capable of harnessing to keep you alive, harnessing all of that two kilowatts of electricity in time of crisis, is the energy that makes a recording in the fabric of the building. As we are dying, our body emits 1,000 times more photons than it does during a normal living state as we are now. It's known as a death flash. And it's the energy, as you are dying, that causes the energy to make a recording in the fabric of the building. Question. Why aren't all ghosts stark naked? How can you see the ghost in my, my, what have I got on? I don't know what it is, a waistcoat? No. How, it's not about energy in it, is it? No. It's because that's how I was dressed when the recording was made. Yeah. That's why the Roman soldiers are seen dressed as they are in Treasurer's House. Hmm. Helmets, shields, swords, sandals. Because they're a recording. They're not the ghosts, because it's the image of a dead person. And we're frightened of it. Yeah? But they're not the spirit and soul of a dead person. This is This is... My huge theory, and I genuinely believe it makes up 60% of what we mistakenly believe to be a ghost. And the last bit, <coughs> we'll carry it, well, well I'll, I'll shut up then. Yeah, Water yeah. plays such a part in the ghost business. If I live long enough, my next book's going to be called Toilet Ghosts. What? Toilet, toilet Ghosts. Ghost. There's toilet so ghost. many haunted toilets. Actually, yeah. Oh, yeah, there is. Yeah. That yeah, were, that remember, they were, you see, the toilets here, Yes. that was a prison cell. Oh. It wasn't a toilet, but it's now a, a and it's water. I mean, think about it: marshland, rivers, <coughs> lakes, streams, yeah. wells, bathrooms, toilets, kitchens uh, have all got ghost stories connected yeah. with them. Water. It's water, yeah. Yeah. which is such a much more important thing. Right now, then, water. Right, mm -hmm. okay. We are made up of seventy-five percent of water. Water. Yeah. Wow. We are. Have like approximately five percent silica in our bodies, which comes from the you water. Can't nothing, can you? No, he's definitely supposed to one. When it rains, <laughs> when it rains, the water flows over the rocks, the mountains, the silica, the limestone, the granite, and the clay, and it absorbs the silica mm -hmm. from it. That's why spring water has so much silica in it. The best one on the planet is actually called Evian water which is, you'll be buying it tomorrow, I'll have to tell you this bit. Oh, right? I can't be it anyway. it yeah. contains more silica in it than any other water. Right, now, our body is made up of 75% water. Yep. Our hard drive, our memory source, is made up of 85% water. This, do you realise this brain is, is actually 85% water? Will the next supercomputers one day be, be water-based like this one is? No. This, no, but this is... I know that is. And this is the best, I don't mean mine, the best computer we'll ever make. <laughs> Trust me, it's recorder, receiver, transmitter, video player, still camera, memory source, everything under the sun. Right, punchline of the story is, as we grow older, we do not retain as much silica in our bodies as we do when we were young. We lose our hair, because it, it plays a big part in hair. Collagen is all based on silica in our bodies, so we get wrinkled more, right? But the punchline of the story is, what else do we lose as we get older? 
Mind? Yeah. Our memory. Our oh, marbles. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They've been experimenting in France for 24 years <laughs> by adding extra silica into the water of elderly people and they've reduced degenerative diseases, including Alzheimer's, by 25%. Public hangings took place where this window is. It's not a window, it's a door. Mm. And it opens. That's a door. Yeah, this one. Uh, is it one of those rotating metal ones? It's a metal, 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 it's a metal door. Sorry. Ah. And the gallows was built up to the light lip there, and they stepped out. They stepped out through that door. Have you seen the, the face on the right hand side? Yeah. Yeah. I know in, it's in just happened, but good, isn't it? Yeah, it's mm. like half a face. It's yeah. very paradoxical, yeah. yeah. isn't it? <laughs> and all the executions took place there. The last public execution in Derbyshire took place in 1862. Should have done that night, Wow. The yeah. ghost of Dick Foley still haunts the place, wow. apparently, mm. this day. Um, the ghost of who? A guy called Dick Thorley. Right. He's the last man publicly executed in Derbyshire. Right. What was his crime? He slit his girlfriend's throat in, the, well, you know, Agard hey, Street, hmm. back of the jail, hmm. in Agard Street there. Right. In 1862. Right. Uh, Twenty thousand people turned up to watch him hang. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the pubs ran out of beer. Um, they had pie sellers, pickpockets, and they were selling these penny dreadfuls, these documents, hmm. the, the programs. For mm. people to watch. Right. Uh, anyway, in 1843, three guys, you know, we were in the murder room. Mm. Did you see those three death heads? Those yeah, the death masks. Yeah. Yeah. Well, those the three death guys, masks, are they? they're yeah. death masks of mm. three guys that were hanged on the top left hand side of the gatehouse. It was three years after the railways had come to Derbyshire, yeah. and they ran special trains throughout Derbyshire. 40,000 people turned up. Yeah, to watch them hang. What? And they all they all hung at the same all on the same day at the they same. They all hang together, one, two, three, on yeah. the gallows at the top of the building. Right. Then they carried them back down into the dead into the dead room at the bottom here mm. and made plaster casts of their faces for phrenologists' yeah. mm. study because they thought it was how many bumps you got on your head as to whether you got murderous tendencies or not, which absolutely oh, bothers. Oh, yeah, but yeah, but they believed it at the time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it Isn't was it discredited. Yeah. yeah. Totally discredited. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then the first person hanged, stepped out through the doorway, was a guy called uh, John Leadham, and he was hanged for bestiality. With, they referred to them as having a thick bull neck, and an incredible sense of self-preservation. And if they hang them in the winter, when, hypoth when hypothermia sets in, they believe that even after half an hour, they could still be alive. What? And some were. Mm. And there are quite a few cases of, of hanged people, murderers, being actually killed by the surgeon, breaking the Hippocratic Oath mm -hmm. by killing them with a scalpel. Whoa. And there's a famous case in Lancaster of uh, a young Scotsman, um, a soldier called Mackenzie, a 19-year-old soldier, and he got in a fight outside a pub, and he stabbed a bloke in the throat and killed him, and he was hanged. And then, he obviously, he was going to be publicly dissected. And they took him to surgeons. They got a surgeon's hall in Lancaster, and they laid him on the on the table. And the surgeon was called away for an emergency, and they left him on the table. And then, twenty minutes later, the surgeon came back into the dissecting room, and Mr. Mackenzie was sat bolt upright on the table. <laughs> begging for mercy, Whoa. the surgeon picked up a wooden mallet mm. and smacked him on the head and killed him oh, because he wanted the body mm. for yeah. dissecting purpose. Yeah. But breaking the Hippocratic Oath, doing the executioner's job. Mm. And again, when they cut into them, sometimes they were still alive, they were killing them, breaking the Hippocratic Oath. Mm. It's incredible, incredible what went on. Bonkers. So down here, guys, as the funeral, as the procession comes to the condemned cell with the padre, the vicar or whatever, reading, reading your burial service while you're still alive. And you come in here and this is the last place you prayed with the vicar or the priest or whatever, down below in what they call the dead room, mm. down here, before going up those steps and waiting for you up there's the hangman. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Um, and then after you were dead, they brought you back down here and made the plaster cast of your face in this room here. Mm. Uh, it was known as the dead room. And for many years, this was a Greyhound Stadium, Derby Greyhound Stadium. And they used to see a dark, shadowy figure in that corner, 
No, I mean, it wasn't like this. It was, it was decorated. Um, and they used to say, but they used to live with it. The girls that, who ever worked in, in here, in the office or whatever, apparently they lived with it. And it, it would appear, it said it didn't have features, and it was just this dark, shadowy figure, and it wouldn't sort of be there and gone. They said it would, it would be there for a few moments. And in the end, they, I mean, first of all, they'd sort of get up and run, but after a time, it used to happen so often, they just got used to it, mm. carried on. Because again, no, didn't do anything to them. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And then you were taken up there into the drop room and prepared for the execution. Shall we? Hands are tied behind your back. And. And then that's unlocked as well, but you can't, I, I haven't got to keep that. And you step out through that doorway onto the gallows. Just drop. And then, yeah, trap door, lever. But not a broken neck. Not then. The rope was tight. All it was was a more convenient way of taking the ground from underneath your feet. Mm -hmm. It was only later when um, this guy here, William Marwood, executioner, realised that if the rope was loose, rather than tight, when you went through the trap door, it broke your neck. Yeah. But before then, you just don't have slow strangulation. It's taking, as I say, anything up to 20 minutes, sometimes half an hour. Um, now that's a bit creepy. Yeah, that's, that's actually... Person with no face. Yeah, well, he's, he's got a white cap over his face that they pulled over your face. Ah. Uh, before they hanged you. That's Dick Thorley. That's the last bloke that stepped through that doorway. The last person publicly executed. That's a photograph. And that's the drawing of him in court. Good likeness, isn't it? It mm. is. It's quite Yeah, quite surprising. And he's supposed to haunt the place. Um, and there's only two things ever happened to me in here. One was the door slammed itself shut when I was painting this. Pa painting this, would you believe? Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I was doing a seance one night, and we did, we did a night vigil here, yeah. and I got people in a circle. And um, well, it was actually not this, not this board, that board, this Sorry. one. Sorry. Sorry. And at the time, it had got that on me. That was that was on it. Um. And funnily enough, it's Dick Thorley. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And it was here. It didn't fall down, it flew. That's where the nail was, yeah. and it was there. And I'm stood here, and since there is spirit with us now, throw with me. You know, um, we only come here in respect for you, you know, we have no fear. I hope you have no fear for us, but if you could do something to let us know, you know. That. Wow. That. That's why it's not on there anymore. Mm. It's impossible. Oh, it's yeah. heavy as well. Yeah, because you think of it, come on. Oh, the nails falling off. Yeah. Oh, the nails falling off. Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> 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 oh, sorry, mate. It can't mate. do what it did. I just stood on the Tell you what, but talk about fear. Uh, I was first downstairs and everybody else followed me. <laughs> we did a dig and we found the execution. Because after no more public executions, mm. they hanged you in a shed with a drop, 12 foot drop underneath it. And when we dug it, dug it out, we found, well, we had, we filled seven plastic bin bags full of prison documents. What? Dumped, dumped, dumped in uh, 1929 when they demolished it. Wow. And it's got all the names and, and uh, next of kin and, and everything on them. Uh, absolutely incredible. We filled um, two buckets full of keys from Derbyshire, all dumped, and still got this one's still got its brass tab on it, and set of keys number five, and um, that's that's a prison cell, that's Jeez. the prison cell key. Um, I was giving these away to the builders, like nobody's business, and I've got many left actually. Um, and then this, all these documents that came out, but this one, this is this was good. This is. Um, Oh. I hereby certify that I have this day examined registration number 126 uh, and find him capable of undergoing several descriptions of punishments as specified below. Blah, 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 blah. He is fit for restraint of handcuffs, 
leg chains or cross irons, body belt and canvas dress. Description of punishment. Cat and nine tails, unfit. Birch rod, unfit. Signed by the medical officer. All dumped, all dumped. It was my own time team job. It was absolutely incredible. So this is... Where is it? This is when we did the dig. That's the drop room that we found. The execution that dropped you through there. And that's some of the stuff, all the stuff as we were digging it out from inside. <laughs> Sorry, Simon. Alright. And I'm just like, ooh. And uh, some of the documents. And here, a letter. This is the original, written by William Pugh in 1896 before they hanged him. He was the first person hanged in that drop. Wow. Dear friend, I now take the pleasure in writing the... Look at his quality of his writing. It's nice. I now take the pleasure in writing these few letters, few lines to you, hoping to find you in the best of health and strength. That it leaves me very well at present, but I shall be happier when I have overcome this cruel death, which is before me. It will be hard work for a minute or two, but when my eyes is closed in death, there will be one beside me, waiting to take my soul into everlasting life. And then it goes on and on, and then degenerates as most. Letters do. Yeah, they do over time, yeah. Oh, come to the Lord who forgives and forgets. There dark be the, fo the fortune on earth that belies you. There's a bright home above where the sun never sets. God be with you all till we meet again. Farewell, farewell, all of you. From an affectionate and fellow workman, William Pugh. <laughs> yeah, that's the original letter. And that was dated now, when? Now 1896. Right. First man hanged in that drop in that in the shed.